What did he sound like? What did Christ sound like? He was like a huge sound bite of information. It wasn't like I heard one thing. It was just a soft, gentle voice that almost whispered, like someone whispering in your ear from behind your head and then telling you stuff. And you just know it. It's like he's telling it and I'm taking it in through osmosis almost. And so he sounds gentle and soft, yet very firm. The love is there, but you don't question like, is there love or isn't there love? You just know it's there. And so that part of it is like not the overwhelming part. It's the part you want back when he stops. It's like you want to hear it, hear it again because there was so much love in it. Even though at the time it was happening, you didn't really hear the love. You just felt it. And then you want to hear his words again so that you can feel that love. See, at this point I would ask, can you give an example? Ask. So, Nadia, can you give an example of something he's, he's answered to you today or recently? The other day, I was driving in the car and I was thinking about people's marriages. Because I talked to so many people who say, this is going on and that's going on and he doesn't understand and he doesn't know what you understand and this is going back and forth and all I feel is frustration because there is no truth really being put on the table. I felt like people's armor is up but they don't know it's up. I know they want to be married. I know they love each other. So what's wrong? And so I'm just driving and I said, Christ, why are we chasing our tails in the places that we put ourselves that we want to be? And then we get there and then it's not what we thought it was. And then he just said, it is what you think it is. It's the words that we use that trap us. We say you get married to be one. That's impossible to be one. You make one, but you are not one. And that has been the fallacy that has tripped up many marriages because people are trying to be something they cannot be. We cannot be one mind because we're two minds. If we came here to be each other, one wouldn't need the other. And because we just say that one thing, or that when our bodies join, we become one. No, we make one. We don't become one. If we do, we just took the strength of two and reduced it to one. And what do you mean when you say we make one? We produce a child. We produce one life, which connects us with all the other ones. And how does it feel when you receive his answer? The feeling that I get is like, oh my gosh, that makes sense. What we've been saying and what we've been doing or trying to do doesn't make sense. So what happens to us is we can't figure out what's wrong. Why is this not working? And it's not that it's not working because we're so bad. It's that we're going down a path that's kind of the wrong path for us. We're trying to create something that can't be. Every soul comes to earth to experience. We choose what we came here to do. The people that are around us chose us as well to work out what they came here to work out. If we said we were each other, even if a mother over identifies with her child, that child grows up not knowing who their mother is because all their mother did was for them. They didn't see her work for her. So what happens to them is they grow up and they're not so sure how to work for them because their role model was them grown up, basically.
And so we miss that. So when I hear him speak, and it does make sense, immediately I rest inside knowing that answer because that answer is true. See, we don't realize how much we took and the realities we created for ourselves with the boundaries that we created. I hear so many people talk about metaphysical and light and um, spiritual and all that just to think of love. It's still just love. Is it only for the spiritual? The people who understand that love rules? Does that mean that the rest of the people who don't feel spiritual don't think love rules? And when I hear him, I feel that love and it doesn't have a label. There is no church on top of it. There is no parent on top of it. There is nothing on top of it except for the love. Well, my next question, Nadia, was going to be, how do you know it's him? But you kind of just explained that. Yes. I always know it's him because it's something I would have never thought about. Not being raised in the world we are raised in, not seeing the same stimulus we all see. That's the beauty of this, is that he's showing me how limited we limited ourselves So, Nani, can you ask him anything that yes, you want? Yes, I do ask him anything. He doesn't answer everything because there's a lot of stuff we came here to learn. And if he were to answer me before I learned it, when I just wanted the answer because of I was either frustrated or hurt or angry about it, I wouldn't even recognize the answer because I would not have been ready for it. So I would not have understood it. Which is why we walk right by an answer. And sometimes somebody will come up to you and they'll say to you, but it was right there all along. And my answer now is, I must not have been ready to see it. And what does it feel like to have him answer you? It feels liberating. It feels... feels like at least somebody knows because we usually don't have that opportunity to feel that the feeling that I used to have more than that was that nobody knows sometimes not even me but knowing this knowing that we all have a partner 